Welcome back. I have a fantastic video for you. I have been seeing a lot of negative criticism going on about Prime Studios The Rings of Power. And what appears to be going on is this seems to be have been confusing a lot of fans. So throughout this video, what I'm going to try to do is clarify and explain some of what's going on here. And listen, the biggest criticism I saw was it doesn't fit with Tolkien stories. Yes, actually it does. You just weren't paying attention, but it's okay because I will point out everything for you right here. So let's just dive right in and let's just get into all this. I got, this is huge. It really is. There's so many things I need to unpack. First of all, if you recall, I did a trailer breakdown where I mentioned that Prime Studio specifically said this is based off the works of Tolkien. And I pointed out that that doesn't mean Lord of the Rings per se. That means all of the other stories that were written. Listen, guys, there was about what? About roughly 30 different spinoffs. If you count the short stories, the novels, and also the appendices they released, if you count all that, you have about 30 stories. That's several thousand pages worth of material to work with, which is precisely what Prime Studios is doing. And I know, I know, I know. There's a lot of people saying, but, 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 but this isn't Tolkien. It's not fully original. It's not canon. Okay. Is this fan fiction? Well, yes, yes, it kind of is a little bit, but there's nothing really wrong with that as, now here's the detail I really want to hone in on. The Lord of the Rings series is not closed. Now you do realize that, right? When Tolkien himself died, he didn't actually finish the series. He was still working on it. And we don't know how much content he was really working on. He left behind notes, he left behind drafts, and the Silmarillion, Unfinished Tales, The Children of Here, and all these, these are my favorites, I just pointed those out. Those were handed to his son, Christopher Tolkien. And what Christopher Tolkien was supposed to do was release these for the public. Well, unfortunately, uh, sadly, Christopher Tolkien is no longer with us. He passed away not too long ago, actually, without having even finished the task. <laughs> he was so, I guess he just got caught up with living life, but he was so slow about it that currently all of Tolkien's papers and stuff is in the estate of somebody else in the care of another person, not even related to the family, which is odd. But that, do you understand my point? It's not closed. There's no such thing as canon. It can continue on forever. Remember, he himself never finished it. Look, the Rings of Power is based off a major gap that was in the stories. We didn't know really where Sauron came from. Ever. That was never really explained. And you could argue that Sauron isn't necessarily a character as he is an archetype. Which does, I mean, it has up till this point made sense. But look, if we're going to continue the series, we do need some more backstory there. We really do. That's what Prime Studios is giving us. The Rings of Power. I saw a really funny criticism where somebody said, it sounds kind of like a kung fu movie, you know, The Rings of Power. <laughs> and it's kind of funny if you see it. And it made me laugh. But listen. That title actually kind of rolls off the tongue. It sounds nice, and it more importantly encapsulates what's going on here. Another thing Tolkien never explained, and probably intended to get around to at some point, was where did all these rings come from? Remember, Galadriel was a guardian of one ring. Uh, there were many people who guarded many different rings, but we never explained why they were there. Like, why are you guarding these powerful rings? If, they, if they're so uh, foul and if they can corrupt the way they do, why wouldn't you just throw them down a ditch? I mean, it, it's an inconsistency. Now, granted, when you're dealing with a, a fantasy genre <coughs> like Lord of the Rings, you tend to forgive this sort of thing. You do. I mean, you can forgive small inconsistencies like this. That's Usually you can do that. But in this day and age, I just don't think you can. And that's precisely what Prime Studios do, is filling in that gap for us. Where did Sauron come from? Where did the rings come from? More importantly, what is their purpose? Why would you guard them? Do you see which kind of rich material you have? Let me also take you back to the Silmarillion. I, I, again, every episode I've been talking about this. But listen, if you're going to watch the Rings of Power, let me just go ahead and help you out. Let me give you some help here. You don't need to just watch the movies. In order to truly understand and appreciate everything that's going on, I'm going to give you guys a list of some things you really need to read. You need to read The Silmarillion. Like, I'm serious. Like, if, you haven't, if you've watched episodes 1 through 3 and it confuses you, just, just pause it temporarily. Go ahead and pick yourself up a copy of The Silmarillion and start there. Read it cover to cover. Read number 2, The Children of Hurin. These are all Tolkien books, okay? Read that one. You sh now, you could just stop right there, okay? You don't, I, w I would say these are the two main books you really need to read. 
And if you're going to do some more reading, I would also recommend that you read Unfinished Tales and read a few of the appendices that were released. If I mean, now granted, the appendices are somewhat dry and boring, but you don't have to read all of them. I would read The Shadow uh, Returns, or excuse me, Return of the Shadow. I would read uh, Morgoth's Ring, Sauron Defeated. I would read those three primarily. I would stick to those. Although I would also say The Lost Road and other writings, and some of those may be useful, but not necessarily important. But The Children of Hurin and the Silmaril, those are the two main ones you really need to read because it forms the basis for everything that's going on here. So if you read The Silmaril, and it was supposed to be set in the first age of Middle-earth, it tells the origin story, the beginnings, the rise of Morgoth, how he stole the Silmarilli, I believe that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> Some people have corrected me on this, but that's just how I've always pronounced it. So uh, just give me some slack there. Okay, and how it ended up corrupting him, how he hated all beauty, and that set up a lot of things, okay? But if you take a look at it analytically, from the Silmarillion to the Lord of the Rings, there's a massive, huge, glaring gap that doesn't always make sense. Like I said, we can forgive these inconsistencies sometimes, but not all the time. And that's really where this series comes in, it's filling in this huge gap and making everything a lot more seamless. So you do need to understand the events that went on there, and including the Children of Huron. Now, if you understand all of these events, the Rings of Power is going to make a lot of sense, and you will see how it actually flows so well with all the books, not just Lord of the Rings. It flows. It ties everything together. That's actually the best part about this series for me. And this is where I'll kind of just tie everything down for you. Look, yes, we all know it's basically fan fiction. We all know it, It's, but it, that's okay in my mind. That's okay, because personally for me, I don't mind seeing large stories like this rewritten a little bit. And by the way, they haven't really rewritten it. That's kind of my point here. But I don't mind seeing them like expanding the story. Remember, that's what Tolkien himself did. He himself never just stopped. He kept adding and adding and adding and expanding all these different things. That's really what Prime Studios is doing, is really just continuing that work. I don't mind that at all. And really, if you watch the series, in mind with the stories I just mentioned, it's really going to make your whole viewing experience so much better and make a lot more sense. But other than that, from a Tolkien perspective, yes, it's fantastic. And by the way, let me say one last thing that may be slightly controversial. I do believe Tolkien himself would sit down and watch this. <laughs> okay, I know what you're thinking, and go ahead and just write the comments. I'm, I will, we, we will nerd out about this, we'll argue or agree about this, that's fine with me. But I'm just going to say, I believe he himself would sit down and watch this series. I do. It's in line with everything he did, okay? There's nothing truly contradictory. And yes, yes, it is a product of its time. But, I mean, what did you really expect, right? All right. So we got all that out of the way. I just wanted to give you guys a few things here to try to clear everything up. Yes, the series does make sense. Yes, it does tie into the stories if you've read the things I've mentioned. And if you paid attention to some of the things I'm trying to tell you. I just wanted to clear that up for you and help you really understand what's going on with this fantastic series. I mean, I'm loving it. I'm enjoying it. It's so great. And if, again, you read all these, you understand all these, your view experience will be so much better. And you'll be enjoying it right along with me. So thanks for hanging out. We're just nerding out over some details. And we'll see you guys next time. Episode 4 is coming. <laughs>